My name is Stephen Floyd, and I've been a foster grand grandparent for about five years. My first year, a little girl named Maya put that little heart sticker on my, on my tag, and I never took it off because it reminded me of what this is all about. It's about hearts. It's Grandpa Steve loves what he does every day and love, does it for the kids. Um, he is excited to go out for recess because he has a special thing with, he is the swing master. And it's not just a, you know, it's not just a, we'll start pushing, he does the whole story. Um, you definitely know when Grandpa Steve is out at recess because the kids line up and wait for the next person off of the swing. Houston, we have countdown. Five, four, three, Two, one, zero, blast off! It's <laughs> just a fire this one. Fire this one. Fire this one. And then explodes! <laughs> he likes to tell them about things from when he was a kid and that kind of helps them relate. Some things are relatable and some things are different, um, but they like to have conversations about when I was a kid, this is what happened, and then this is what you're doing as a kid. So they like to have conversations about things like that. I can relate to what they're going through, like some of these kids that are with, presently without a dad. You know, I know how that feels. My first dad died of leukemia when I was six years old. And for about four years, I was without a dad. I don't know what that was like. And the kids that tease me about being without a dad. And, um, and then my mom got married again four years later. I know what it's like to also later on have stepbrothers. Um, I know what it was like to, after my dad died, to spend some time with um, in school being a daydreamer because that was my escape from things to, you know, to dream about my dad. So when I see kids and I talk to them, I, because I had a lot of different kinds of experiences growing up, um, I remember those things and that helps me actually in helping these kids because I can relate to, I know how a little bit anyway, how they feel. And I also know that we can't possibly know everything how they feel. You know, there's some things that we don't understand because we're really not in their shoes. And uh, well, that's when they just need some compassion. Some of our um, little friends are very open, you know, and they view it almost like a male figure because in our clientele, um, in our community, not everybody ha comes from a two-person home. And so that position as uh, Grandpa Steve almost like fills that empty spot within their family. And so as far as the real, you know, having that relationship, they really feel as it's more of just kind of that extra security um, within the day. He is not afraid to sit on the floor with him. If he comes in, we're on the floor, he sits right beside him on the floor, and they like to get pretty close, you know, just to make sure that he's gonna give them some attention, but they enjoy his time and they want his help and they like to visit with him about different things. I remember my third grade teacher uh, telling me, keeping me in from recess and saying, Steve, you're hopeless. And at the time I thought I was. At the same third grade teacher, when I graduated from high school, I was one of the three speakers for the, for the commencement. And um, it was the thir same third grade teacher that told me I was hopeless. I saw her at, a, at an open house later, and I remember her saying to me, she said, you were struggling, you know, when you were in third grade, weren't you? And I said, yeah. She said, no, you certainly have changed. I guess I remember all those things, those struggles as a kid. The daydreamer, the struggling with, you know, I got third grade and I got five F's on my report card. I know that kids, even though they may think, even if they think themselves as being hopeless at the time, and when they don't think they can do anything academically, that their lives can change and they, and they start to have somebody that believes in them. Good off the Red Nose Ranger had a very shiny nose that if you ever saw it, you would even say it close. We had paid in, in hugs by little people on a, on a regular basis. And those were worth about a million bucks right there. Hi, Mrs. Rescue. 